Okay, so first, tell me, um, you were assigned over the last few days to watch some videos, to watch a video. I shared with you a video from my, my favorite, one of my favorite video people, John Hess of filmmakeriq.com. He's always like, like rushing, rushing. I got to, I got to do it right. He's always like, hi, I'm John Hess of filmmakeriq.com, right? He's the best. I love him. He's amazing. So tell me, what did you think? What did you think about that video? Let us discuss. What do you think? I found the double exposure part really interesting because I've done that with photography, but I hadn't heard of it being done with film. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Um, you're talking about George uh, Mieus or Mielis or whatever, wait, the heads. That's pretty cool, right? Pretty cool, right? How he figured out how to do that. Like, super cool that this guy, like, sat there and, like, had the gears in his head like to figure out how to make that work and how to make that actually happen. Um, he's a very famous old school filmmaker that made a lot of um, cool effects in film and really pushed and pushed the boundaries of what film was capable of. You may have seen that iconic image of the, the moon with the rocket that like lands in the face and the eye of the moon. You guys know what I'm talking about? That's, that's him, that's, that's that guy. Um, maybe you saw the movie Hugo. Anyone see Hugo, the movie Hugo when you were a kid, right? Okay, that's that guy, that guy, right? Same guy in, our, in the green screen video that, um, that uh, was talked about there. So yeah, super cool, like how they figured out how to, how to expose the film, but also how to like block off sections of the film so they could expose it later and like get the effect that they were going for. Um, really cool, like the genius of these people. Like I don't think I ever could have figured stuff like that out. Um, but they've figured it out, which I think is really, really cool. Um, smart people, smart people. What else stood out to you? I did not realize just how early it started. That's what really surprised me. I thought it was more of a modern. Special effects in general or green screen? The green screening and like, I was just floored when I saw the black and white film. Mm -hmm. Yeah the effects in the background yeah 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 super yeah really impressive how um how far back these effects go right like i mean the they were doing effects from the very beginning uh, john john hess in his video makes the point that um filmmakers have been doing special effects since the very beginning um they were always trying to figure out ways to make effects in their movie so they could better showcase whatever their vision was, whatever they were trying to accomplish. Um, and that's really cool. And even green screening stems from earlier types of mats that were created. Um, and, you know, green screening, we owe a lot of green screening to broadcast, you know, sports and, and graphics where they put graphics up on the screen and stuff like that. You know, green screen, a lot of the technology, you know, has been developed in television and broadcast and sports and news and things like that. Um, but even well before that, you had the filmmakers that were trying to figure out ways to creatively tell their stories, which is really, really cool. Um, other thoughts? Anything else stood out to you? I thought it was crazy the amount of time people were willing to spend on it, like doing it like frame by frame, or like when they had to do it manually. I just can't imagine how long that would take. Did you, did you guys catch the part where he talked about um, how they had to filter the prism with the, they use a prism to filter the light and then a special colored light like that like you find in parking lots. And then they would Xerox it over and copy it back a number of times until they just had the met. Like, can you imagine the amount of time? Like that was somebody's job it was to like copy those color plates over and over and over and over again until they just made a nice strong silhouette. Um, I mean, that was somebody's job at Disney. Like it's crazy, right? Um, so yeah, it just, Kept, keeps going and keeps going and and it's really interesting how you know again like who came up with that right like who i mean they, we, we know because they talked about it but like it's cr like how like how would you even sit there and be like i think i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to isolate this color by using a spectrum and then using the 
you know, using a special type of photon light that operates at a certain, certain range of, you know, Kelvins, and then I'm going to put it through a prism and all like, that's amazing. Like that is just, that is just amazing. Right. I mean, I love the technology of film. Like one of the reasons why I like film is because I, I do like the technology. I'm good at computers. I'm good at cameras. You know, I like that stuff. Um, and I like understanding how it works and getting it to do what I want it to do. So I really appreciate that, but man, like, I mean, this is, you know, I'm good at the technology because the technology has been developed. I couldn't come up with a new technology like a lot of these old filmmakers did. I mean, that just blows my mind. Um, cool, cool. So yeah, good stuff. Green screening and, and these effects have been around with us for quite some time. We are all benefactors of that. You know, today we sit at a computer and push a button and we don't realize how good we have it, right? Um, so that was really kind of the main takeaway of what I really wanted you to get out of that video was just the amazing ingenuity of these filmmakers that came before us because we really owe them a debt of gratitude because they spent countless hours and days and years of their lives figuring out how to accomplish these really amazing effects. Um, and we all benefit from that because the technology that we use operates much in the same way that those earlier filmmakers did with their technology. Um, it's just that we have the computers to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And we do it in a fraction of the time. By the end of today, by the end of this class period, you're all gonna have green screen something. Whereas it would take months and months and months and years for these people you know, way back when to develop this technology and, and in order to achieve the effects that, that we're gonna achieve today in, in a fraction of the time. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's kind of what I wanted you to get out of that video. If, if I thank you for watching it. That was part of your class. If you did not watch it, you need to watch it. That is part of your class. That is part of your education. Part of this class is slightly, is a little bit of film history. So you need to make sure that you watch that if you have not already done so. Um, I told the morning class about half of them watched it. About half of them didn't. Um, I will be kind to you and not ask for a show of hands. Um, however, However, if you did not watch it, you need to watch it. Um, and I will be sending you videos in the future. And when I do, you need to watch them. I told the morning class, um, I, I'd rather not give you tests and quizzes about the things that I send. I'd rather just trust you to watch them so that we can talk about them. Um, but if I feel that I need to in the future, I will. So do not test me because I will test you. All right, so watch the things that I send you. Uh, and if you don't, or it becomes clear that you're not, um, I, will, I will give you quizzes on it and I'll, I'll, make you, I'll make it for points. I've never done that in my entire career um, and I don't intend to start, but it's up to you guys really. So please, 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 please. You like film, film's cool. I only send you cool stuff. So please, please, please watch the stuff that I send you. It is part of class. We would watch that stuff in class if we were here in person together. All right, which brings us to today. Today, we are going, we are going to make our own green screening. We are going to green screen like champions. I've got my green shirt on. I'm very excited about this. Um, we are gonna green screen like you've never green screened before. So in preparation for this, uh, you should have downloaded a couple of clips from the green screen folder that I provided. Um, I shared with you a folder. It was on the slate. Um, and you should have downloaded a couple of clips from the Google Drive onto your computer in preparation for today. If you have not done so, um, you might be able to do it very quickly right now without me noticing. So you should probably do that if you haven't already done so. You only need a couple. Um, but you should have already downloaded a couple of green screen clips to your computer in preparation. We will be editing. So if you're not already at your editing computer, you need to be. Um, and we are going to... I'm going to teach you how to green screen and what that looks like and how that works. So um, go ahead and get to your editing computer and let's fire up Premiere. Let's fire up Premiere. So I've already, uh, I've already opened Premiere. So I've got it up here on my screen, all ready to go. I will share it with you now. So please let me know when you've got your Premiere open so that I know I'm, I can move on. Uh, when Premiere opens, you'll need to give it a project name. You can just call this green screen or something like that, like whatever works. Um, I'm not going to see the name of the project as long as you know what it is. Um, green screen is fine. Make sure you know where you're saving it. Make sure you know where you're putting it um, so that you can access it again later. Jeremy's giving me a thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you, sir. 
you're good to go. Nick looks like he's ready. And then go ahead and like open it um, and you'll need to import the green screen clips that you downloaded off of the Google Drive, you'll need to import those green screen clips into your project. So on my project, I already have a whole bunch of green screen clips that I shot in preparation for this very lesson. So if I go to my thumbnail views here, um, you can see me. Here's uh, me as Indiana Jones, uh, which is great. That's good stuff. And, um, and then here's me as Superman. Also great stuff. Also great stuff. How many, how many of your other teachers would put on tights and dress up as Superman for you? Huh? Huh? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Here I am, ready to embarrass myself for you, the benefit of your education. All right, so you need to import um, your clips into Premiere, and then you will need to create a sequence. You will need to create a sequence. You can go to File, New, Sequence. You can also just hit Control-N or uh, Command N if you are on a Mac, if you are an Apple user, and create a new sequence that way. You'll want your sequence settings to match your clips. And since you're downloading clips from my folder, you probably don't know what they are. I know they're shot on a DSLR. I know they're 1080p. I do not know if they are 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. If you need to check, remember, you can always look in your bin and hit the list view down here. And then you can look at the frame rate. And I can see I have all these shots here that are 24 frames per second. So make sure when you create your sequences, just a reminder, you wanna know what your sequence settings are. Um, so I actually have some clips here that are shot in 4K. I'll be working in 4K today. Um, but um, all of you have uh, 1080p footage that are, that's probably 30 frames or uh, 24 frames per second. So one of the two. So once you have a sequence, I have a sequence that I've created that's all ready to go. Um, I should give it a name. It's called something else, but that's okay. Um, but I've got a sequence. My timeline's empty and I'm ready. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in one of my clips. So I'm going to find the clip that I want. And this is the one that I want. And I'm going to drag it in. And here is my clip. And here's me as Indiana Jones looking at the camera in front of my green screen. Now, I get a lot of different clips here in preparation for this particular lesson. And some of them are better than others for a variety of reasons. So for example, here um, is another clip from my little Indiana Jones short that I made. Um, and you can see that this green on this side is different from this screen on this side. So this is my program monitor. This is what I'm looking at right now. This is what I'm working at with my timeline. This is my source monitor. This is a different clip. And you can see right away that these are two different greens. And I can look at both of these and immediately tell that this, this video here in my source monitor, this clip here, this one's gonna green screen. This one's going to key a lot better than this one here in my program monitor. Now, when I use the word key, that's a, that's a term, that's an industry term. And what that means is it's kind of like unlocking a door, right? It's a key. I'm gonna use a certain color as the key to unlock the transparency. And in this case, we're using green because I used a green screen, okay? But you can actually use any color you want, um, but I'm going to use green. That is the color that I'm going to key and as I'm looking at these two greens, as I'm looking at these two images, I can, I can tell right away, because I, I understand how it works, that this clip here is going to key a lot cleaner, and it's gonna work a lot better than this particular clip. Uh, any idea why? Anybody? You don't wanna take a stab at it? Why is this one gonna work better than this one? Um, there aren't any folds in the background and it also excellent. like covers the whole screen. Excellent. Excellent. So as you can see in this clip here, I didn't cover the whole screen. So that's, that's going to be a problem. I'm going I'm to have to figure out a way to cut that out. Fortunately I can, um, but excellent. You can see that on this screen, it's nice. It's flat. It's one even value. If you've ever taken an art class before, you've heard the term value, right? Where you have different values of a color, different shades of a color. In this one, I have different values. I've got a hot spot over here that's really bright. It's a light green, but I also have right next to it a very dark green because it's in the shadows. 
right? This is going to cause problems for me when I try to, when I try to key this particular clip. Whereas this one over here, it's nice, it's flat, it's even, it's the same color. It's going to key very, very nicely. The other issue is this one and this one are white balanced differently. So on this shot on the left, I'm white balanced and more of a, a nice blue kind of look. Uh, and that's actually good because this green is very different from my skin tone, from my outfit here, from everything that I'm wearing. Whereas this shot here, I can actually see a lot of the yellow that's in this shot. This is too warm. The white balance on here was too warm. And, and I can see yellow in this green screen. Well, I'm also wearing you know, shades of yellow, right? My skin tone has some yellow in it. So that's gonna create a challenge to try to separate this screen from me and my uniform and my skin tone, all that kind of stuff. Whereas this screen is just gonna is just gonna separate cleanly, really nicely. Um, so white balance becomes important also as you prepare a green screen. So if we were in class, we would kind of do this together and we'd kind of talk about how to set the green screen you know, nicely. The important thing that you need to know when you're in production on set trying to set up a green screen is that you want it as flat as possible so that there are no folds. You want it so there are no different values, no different shades of green. You don't want a light green and a dark green. You want a nice, even, one singular color of green. Now, in the clips that I uploaded to the Google Drive, there's a ton of them in there. Most of them are just um, examples that we filmed in class, as a class. There's a few students walking around in a green screen. I think there's a shot of my niece in there who's flying like a superhero. Uh, there's a few different examples of clips in there, and some of them are better lit than others. Some of them are set up nicely with nice uniform green, and some of them are not. Some of them, we on purpose, we made it really hard because I want you to be able to see the limitations of, of being able to key a color because some, we can still work with this shot, even though, even though it's not great, I can still work with this and make this work. Um, but I want you to be able to see the limitations of this so that you understand the advantages of getting it right on set. So you can, you can set up a green screen and do it properly and make sure that it's lit properly um, so that everything works. So this is a great example because there's no shadows. I'm not casting a shadow. I'm separate from the background. It's great. Whereas this one, there's shadows over here. There's shadows in the folds. It's gonna create a little bit of a problem, but I can still work with it. I can still work with it. On my superhero shots, let me see if I have any of my superhero shots. Um, on my superhero shots, that actually created quite a bit of a problem. So here's my superhero shot. You can see there's a lot of folds here. A lot, a lot of folds here. Um, I'm also casting a little bit of a shadow here. So I didn't light, I didn't light the green screen separately. But another big issue was that um, I couldn't stand far enough away in order to get the wide shot. I couldn't stand far enough away from my green screen um, and so it's, I'm, my shadow is right there. It's right next to the green screen. And there's enough green um, that's reflecting into my hair. And there's enough green that's in the blue of the, of the superhero costume here um, that there's actually some green in there. So keying this was actually really difficult. When I tried to key this, um, it, it kind of worked, but it, it didn't really work. Um, and, that, and that was a problem. So if I, if I pull that up, you know, there's my finished product, but it's not, it's not perfect. If I play it back, you can see some issues with the hair and stuff like that. It doesn't, it doesn't quite work perfectly. So if I wanted this to be perfect, I'd actually have to do this in a different way because the green screen wasn't as effective as it could have been had I spent more time on it. I spent very little time on this. Don't judge me. All right. So, all right. Which brings us to how to green screen. So, Bring a clip into your timeline. You should all have a clip into your timeline here. I've got one clip here that I'm gonna work with. So here's my clip in my timeline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to throw an effect on it. So I need to find the right effect. So to find the effect, I'm gonna to go to my effects over here, not to be confused with my effects up here. That's a layout. I'm not doing a layout. I'm looking for the effects panel, which is over here. So I'm gonna click on the effects panel and there's a whole bunch of effects in here. And I can go digging for the one that I want. I can, I can look, it's not a video transition, it's an effect. I can open this up, I can go to keying and I can find it, but I can also just type in this search bar right here. I know what it's called, it's called the ultra key because it's ultra. So I'm gonna type ultra and it's gonna come right up, there's the ultra key. And I'm gonna take the ultra key effect and I'm gonna click and drag it onto 
the clip that I want to apply it to, which is this one right here. You could also highlight your clip and double click the effect and that would make it work. You could also drag the effect into the effect controls. So if you don't have your effect controls open, you're gonna need them open. It's up here next to your source monitor. So there's my source monitor, here's my effect controls. And when you highlight your clip, it will show all of the effects in your effect control. So here's my motion. Um, this has things like the position and the scale and the rotation and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna close that because I'm not working with that right now. It has opacity, which is nice and handy. Uh, and then here is the effect that I just added, the alter key. Now, if we are in class, there's always a student, maybe it's you, uh, there's always a student who accidentally like double clicks this like a million times and adds like a million alter keys, okay? <laughs> Okay. No, 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 no. You just added like 10 ultra keys to your effect. You don't want to do that. It's not going to work. So if you added a bunch of ultra keys, you only want one, highlight the ones that you don't want and then press delete. So I'm going to highlight and press delete, highlight and press delete. All right. So now, now I've got, now I've got one. There we go. Question. Yes. Uh, how do you get to the ultra key? My zoom just froze. So you need to go to your effects. It's an effect. All right. Yeah, I got that. Click on effects and it's under video effects and it's under keen. And you can also just type right here in the search that you're looking for ultra key and it'll come up as well. All right. Thank you. I only you're have, welcome. I only have project and media browser in that section. Then you need to reset your layout. Do you remember how to do that? It was in one of my lessons. I think I do know how to do that. So make sure you're in the editing. We're in editing right now. That's what I'm staying on. I'm in the editing layout. Yeah, okay. And if you need to reset for the benefit, for the benefit of all those watching at home on YouTube, when I post this later, you can reset your layout by going to window workspaces, reset to saved layout, and it will reset everything to the way that it once was. And here's my effects down here. There it is. And there is my ultra key. Are we good? Yes. Thank you. All right. You are welcome. Okay. So, I've got my ultra key added to my clip. I am ready to begin doing stuff. But Mr. Taylor, I'm so confused. I added the ultra key and nothing happened. Well, yes, we do actually have to do something with the effect that we just added. We have to control the effect by going into our effect controls. So I'm up here by the effect controls. I'm gonna go to my ultra key and here's where the magic happens. Anytime you add an effect to a clip, you will see the effect here in your effect controls. That is how you control the effect that you have added. So there are great many effects. If I look here, these are all video effects. Look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. So much stuff, so much stuff. So if I wanted to play around with those effects and add them, they would appear here in the effect controls and that is how you control them. So I am controlling the ultra key. The first thing that I need to do is I need to pick the color green that I am working with. So over here by key color, and you may follow along if you're here at this point, over here by key color, there's a little box. This little box that I'm highlighting right here. That is the color that I'm going to key. That is the color that I'm going to unlock. So I'm gonna take this little eyedropper tool that's next to the box. I'm gonna click on the eyedropper and I'm going to choose the shade, the value of green that I wish to unlock. So for this one, um, I find in my experience, since I have a lot of values here on this green screen, um, because I didn't light this super evenly, it's not the worst one, but it's not the best one either. Yours might be much worse. Um, so since, I am, since I'm working with different values here, I find in my experience that usually the darker shades seem to key the best when I'm trying to eliminate everything. So I'm gonna choose one of the darker greens that I have here. So I'm gonna choose, uh, I'm gonna choose this right here in this shadow. And I'm gonna click on that. And right away, you will notice that it's gonna eliminate a whole bunch of green, but it's not, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Like there's still a lot of stuff going on there. I need to figure out how to really dial this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back here to my effect controls and next to output, it's showing me what output I have on right now. And right now it is on composite. I'm gonna open up this little window and I'm gonna change this to the alpha channel. And the alpha channel creates everything so it's just white and black. And everything that's white is there. And everything that's black is transparent and it's not there. And my goal as I'm keying stuff, as I'm using a green screen, 
My goal is to create a nice clean mat. I want to get rid of all of this speckled garbage. I want it so it's just a white silhouette with nothing else. And when I do that, I'll have a nice clean green screen that doesn't have a lot of static in it, doesn't have a lot of weird imagery or noise jumping around. So I'm going to leave this on alpha channel because that's really going to help me as I'm working. So I'm going to come over here to mat generation and I'm going to drill this open. There's a little arrow next to mat generation. I'm going to drill it open and I've got transparency. I'm going to drill that open, highlight, drill that open, shadow, open up that. I've got pedestal. I'm going to open up that. Tolerance. I'm going to leave tolerance alone. I don't really need to worry about that one, but I'm going to play around with these sliders and how you use these sliders is going to be different based on the shot that you have. So how, how, how I do this is going to be different from how you do this. And it's really a lot of trial and error. You're going to have to figure out what is affecting your key in what ways. The highlights adjust the key for the highlighted areas, the higher values, the brighter values, right? And the shadows adjust it for the darker areas, the darker values. And then pedestal kind of adjusts other things as well as transparency. So I'm going to start with pedestal here and I'm going to slide this around. And immediately I can see a lot of my green looks a lot better. In fact, I can almost get a perfect job just by using pedestal alone. So that's pretty good. Yours is probably not like that because you probably have a, a shot that's much worse than that. Okay. So, but I'm going to adjust this around a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to adjust my shadows and see if I can get rid of some of the shadows here. I'm going to adjust my pedestal a little more. Adjust my shadows a little bit more. All right, I still have some, I have some speckled area under my hat here. I don't want to lose that. So maybe I'll adjust my highlights a little bit. Oh, no, that's not going to help. What if I adjust my transparency a little bit? Oh, hey, look at that. Look at that. I can see all that little area. I can get rid of that by adjusting my transparency. I don't want to go too far because then I get more noise. I don't want that. I want a nice, clean silhouette. That looks pretty good. I'm going to look around at different parts of my clip. And hey, look at that. That's actually a pretty, that's actually a really good key. I'm actually really happy with that. That is good stuff. That is good stuff. My key that I thought was so bad actually isn't that bad at all. Now, the clips that you have, again, some of the clips that I put in that folder, we shot them bad on purpose because I wanted students to see what can and cannot be done with a green screen. So you might be working with a clip that's really okay or really not okay, um, but that's okay. That's fine. I want you to kind of play around with it. And you're gonna to have to adjust those sliders more or less to kind of work with it. When I'm done adjusting these sliders and I've got a nice clean mat here, I can change alpha channel back to composite and there I am. And that looks pretty good. Now, if you look carefully at this, you might notice that I have kind of a green outline. There's a little bit of a green outline and I don't really want that there. So I'm gonna to go to spill suppression and I am going to go to spill and I'm going to adjust this spill a little bit to kind of get rid of some of that green. And that got rid of some of that green outline. So that was good. And if that's still not enough, I can go to matte cleanup and I can soften my edges a little bit if I want to soften the edges. I don't know if you can see that on my screen. You have to look really carefully, but I can soften my edges a little bit. So I might soften it just a little bit here. And if I want to choke the edges, I can do that as well. And what that does is it basically deletes the pixels around the edge. And you can see me get skinnier if I push this all the way. So I'm going to add just a little bit of those things. And that's going to help me get rid of that green outline. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I still have this corner where I didn't have a green screen. So I'm going to have to figure that out in a minute. Um, but go ahead and play around with that. Try to get a good, solid green screen. Um, how are you guys doing? What do you think? Good? Doing all right? Get, getting some clean mats in there? Yeah? Okay. Okay. All right. So once I have a nice, clean mat, I'm ready to add a background. So, so since Premiere works in layers, right now my video is on V1, video track one. And I'm going to need to move it because I need my background underneath it because it works in layers, right? Like Photoshop. So I'm going to take my video and I'm going to put it to V track two. Okay. And now I've got a nice empty layer here. So if I want to put a background in there, I can put a background in there. Now you can put any kind of background that you want. I can shoot a video. I can put a video back here. I can put an image back here. So I actually have an image here. So let me find my image that I want to use. Um, 
let's see, this one. I'm going to take my image and I'm going to put it back here and I'm going to extend it. And there's my image, but it's super, super small. So I'm going to take my image and highlight it. I'm going to right click it because right clicking is the answer to everything in Adobe. And I am going to set it to my frame size. And now I've got a nice jungly image going on behind me. This looks pretty cool. This is looking okay. It's, it's getting better. It's getting better. Now I've got to figure out this section here. What am I going to do? I got to crop that out. Hey, I wonder, I wonder if there's an effect in here that will help me crop stuff out. Let's see, video effects. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Is it under transform? Hey, look, there's a crop effect under, under video effects, under transform. This is perfect. So I'm gonna take my crop effect and I'm going to put it onto my clip. By the way, we will be working a lot with crop effects on Thursday, for those of you who are interested. And now I've got a crop effect here, which also appears in my effect controls. And I'm gonna take this pen right here, this little pen tool that's under crop, and I'm gonna select that. And I'm gonna draw, I'm just gonna draw and connect the dots around this section that I do not want. And I'm gonna adjust these points so that it covers all of the section that I do not want. All right, there we go. And now I can take the crop. So I've got a left and a top and a right and a bottom. And I'm just gonna take the left and I'm just gonna crop it to 100%. And now I've eliminated that section. So now my, my poor green screening is not a problem. Now I've got my nice clip that covers everything in its entirety. You know what, I think I want a different background. I want, let's go with this one. Yeah, I want this one. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so now I've got my background, everything looks great. So I'm looking at this, and I can play it back, I can hit the space bar, and I can play it back, and I can watch myself kind of walk around in this ancient jungle temple. Um, but there's a few things that I notice maybe aren't quite great. I can tell right away if I want to keep working on this and really make this look real, I can tell that my color doesn't really match the background. So I might want to adjust the color. So I'm going to adjust the color for myself. Now, I need to be careful with this because if I adjust the color for myself, it's also going to adjust that green. So it might mess up my key. Ah, shoot, man, I should have color corrected before I color, before I did my key lesson learned. So I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to need, let's see, I'm going to need some more contrast. That's starting to look a little better. I'm going to bring my blacks down a little bit. I'm going to make it a little cooler. I think it's a little too warm. There we go. That's looking better. That's looking better. Yeah. I'm going to leave that there. Bring that down. There we go desaturate just a touch to make it feel like it's more nighttime. There we go. There we go. There we go. And now, now I'm starting to feel like I'm actually in this shot, right? Maybe add a little more green. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Now I might need to check my key again because I changed my key. So let's, let's check my key. I'm gonna change this back to alpha channel. Nope, still looks good, no problems. Didn't screw it up. So we're in good shape. So I'm gonna back to composite. So now I've got a nice, a nice looking shot and I'm happy with this. And if I turn this in to Mr. Taylor, he'd probably give me an A. So that's exciting. Good for me, I'm excited. So your mission is to create a green screen shot and to make it look believable, to make it look real, to make it look authentic, okay? Um, you might need a background. You can use a video. You can use an image that you find on the internet. Make sure the image is large enough. Otherwise, it's going to look pixelated and gross. And you don't want that, okay? And you need to turn it in to my Dropbox, the junior Dropbox, which you should have bookmarked already. It is also on the slate if you need it. It is due 
uh, by the end of Wednesday. So you actually have a few days to do this. So if you are so inclined, you may go a little bit above and beyond if you wish to challenge yourself or perhaps if you'd like to earn an extra point or two of extra credit. Um, there's a few of you in class who could stand to use a point or two of extra credit. Um, if you would like to gain a point or two of extra credit, you may shoot your own green screen shot. Now remember, you can do this with any color. You can do this with any color. The trick is to make sure it's very different from whatever you are shooting. So if you have a bed sheet that's purple or a bed sheet that's bright blue or a bed sheet that is green or yellow or red or orange, orange might be tricky because skin tone is orange. Everyone's skin tone is orange, regardless as to um, how light or how dark your skin is or what race or ethnicity you are. Um, the melalone, the melalo, the, that, that thing in your skin is, is orange. And we're all orange, right? And so that's why, that's why for a long time, um, we use blue screen in the industry because it was the opposite of skin tone. But blue was kind of common in people's wardrobes. We all wear blue jeans and stuff like that. So they started using green because that's pretty different. Uh, it's also like really easily photographed um, by, by camera sensors. So that was another good reason why they used green. Um, but you don't have to use green. Um, if we were in class, we would just shoot some examples here in class and you would all edit the same thing. And by the end of the period today, you would turn it into my Dropbox. But since we have a couple of days since before I see you again, um, you have an opportunity if you were so inclined to challenge yourself um, and do something a little more fun if you would like. Um, so I'll show you the example that I made. So let me bring up my example and you can see what I made. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That's my that's my little video. I did it very quickly. Uh, my green screen's not the most amazing in the world at all, um, but I did it all in Premiere. If, if we were doing this professionally, if I was turning this in for like a real movie or something like that, if this was a professional job that I wanted to do, I would not use Premiere. I'd actually use After Effects. I can do I can get a much better green screen job in After Effects. There was still a little green outline in a few places. Um, that I didn't touch up enough um, or that I would have done in After Effects and that would have created a much better, stronger key. Uh, but we're not ready for After Effects just yet. I want to teach you the basics. So I wanted to do this all in Premiere so that you could see what's, what Premiere is capable of um, and what, since you're all working in Premiere right now. Um, so your mission, should you choose to accept it, is you must turn in a green screen clip that looks real to my Dropbox. It needs to be, you know, a, a little you know, a few seconds long, at least. It can't just be like a second or two. That's too short. You know, give me something like at least 10 seconds or so. Um, that sounds about right. All right. So turn that into my Dropbox. Make sure that your name is on it. Okay. If you want to use one of the clips that I have in my, in my Google Drive box, go for it. You can turn that in, make it look real, make it look authentic. Most of those are just people walking around. You can put a city street on there or something like that. You can turn that in. That's fine. You'll get the credit. No big thing. But if, however, you wish to go above and beyond, if you wish to go challenge yourself and take things up to 11, um, then by all means, shoot your own little green screen clip um, and be creative with it and have some fun with it. Um, normally, we would just do this in class and we would turn it in by the end of the period. But since we have a couple of days since I, before I see you again and you're working on this on your own time, um, you have an opportunity, you have a few days. 
um, to have some fun with it and work and play around with it if you are so inclined. Um, so you might have the best green screening exercises that I've ever had in my eight years of teaching. Um, so that would be very, very exciting for all of you. Um, so I encourage you to do that. I'll give it a, a couple points of extra credit if you are inclined to do so, but I realize not everyone is inclined to do so. Maybe you're busy with other classes. Uh, maybe you don't have the right kind of bed sheet or something like that. Um, that's fine. You don't need to. You can use the ones that I have in the Dropbox and you'll still get the credit that you need. Um, but if you want to have a little extra fun with it and kind of show off and show us what you're capable of, by all means, have some fun with it and make something a little bit cooler. Don't go crazy. I don't want any five minute movies or anything. Um, we're just learning about green screen. I want you to make sure that you know how to green screen. Um, so on that will be due by in my Dropbox by the end of Wednesday. So we'll say Wednesday by midnight. Uh, on Thursday, we will be learning another effect. We will be learning the double effect. Um, we will double yourselves in shots. Very similar to what we saw in Maya Duren's film um, in Meshes of the Afternoon, where she's sitting at the table talking to different versions of herself. We're gonna learn how to do that on Thursday. I think it's actually an easier effect than what we learned today. Um, we will go over it and, and we'll, you'll, you'll have class time that you can actually go shoot and create your clips that you need to for that clip. But also, I won't see you after Thursday until Monday. So if you want, again, if you wanna have a little more fun with it, you're welcome, you're welcome to do so. Um, so that is all um, for Thursday. Um, we will be prepared to get on the computer again so that you know what is going on. I'll have some examples um, that I'll have you download. I'll email that to you. Um, and then uh, if you have your camera charged and your tripod all ready to go, when I let you out of class early on Thursday, um, if you are so inclined, you can shoot exactly what you need to shoot right then and there and use your class time for that. And you can get it done and get it out of the way if that's something that you want to do. But you'll have a few days to do it if you'd rather spend more time on it. I believe that is all. I'm letting you out early today. I'm letting you out a solid, let's see, 15, like 24 minutes early. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm a really nice guy. I'm a super nice guy. Please remember that the next time I keep you late. Okay. I just earned myself 24 minutes. Okay. Remember that when I keep you late at some point, because that will definitely happen. Um, if you have questions or you need a little bit of more um, explanation on any of the things that we talked about today, you're welcome to hang out. I will be here. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Otherwise, I will look for your green screen clips in the Junior Dropbox. There's a folder for it, and the Junior Dropbox is on Google Drive. Okay, I shared it with you. It's on the slate as well. Okay, please make sure that you upload your clip to that folder by the end of the day Wednesday, and I will look forward to seeing what you have. And if there is nothing else, I will see you later. So long and farewell. Make some magic happen. See ya. Thank you. Thank you.